So guess who's back in the playoff discussion? The Ohio State Buckeyes. I didn't think it was going to happen. It happened like that. So I think maybe we overestimated, or at least I overestimated previously, how far out of it they were. Um, the Georgia loss really helped. The Washington loss really, really helped. As we look at this now, what percent chance do you think there is that Ohio State makes the playoff, taking everything into consideration that they have to win out? Although we thought they had to win out before. Maybe they'll get it as a three-loss team. I don't know. But that they have to beat it with Michigan and then beat Wisconsin, and that some other things have to happen. I laid it out in a, in a post a couple days ago, but what's your chance right now that Ohio State makes it? Uh, 53%. Is that, was that a different number than you were expecting? That's in the range. Okay. Yeah, I, certainly there is a path out there, and you laid it out. Um, and, and they're going to – in this scenario, obviously, they're going to be a Big Ten champion. I still want to see when the rankings come out on Tuesday night how much they're punishing Ohio State for losing by 31 to an Iowa team that was shown to be very average against Wisconsin. Um, we've seen them punish teams for big losses in the past. and It doesn't matter who you lose to. I think it matters by how much you lose by, and they have two very lopsided losses. And I don't think the committee is going to forgive that very much. Now, they might not have a choice to forgive it in the end, depending on who wins and loses. Um, but I'm just slightly better than 50-50 than right now for Ohio State because I do think they're still going to be punished for losing games like that. All right, you're at 53. What's your number, Tim? Slightly lower than that. I'd say 37%. That's way lower? 16 points lower. Yeah, 16 points lower. And I say that because I, we sat on the, I sat on the podcast Saturday, Ohio State simply not control of its own destiny. It has to take care of business. And I think that business also includes Wisconsin beating Michigan on Saturday and getting into the Big Ten title game undefeated. You know, Georgia and Notre Dame losing is a good step in the process, but I do think that by Michigan week at the very latest, Ohio State needs to be in the top ten to really give itself a shot to get in. And they need to continue winning, playing the way they played, you know, beating – Michigan State by 45 was a step in the right direction. They'll take care of Illinois by however many points they do, I'm assuming a lot. They probably have to do the same thing to Michigan and do something very similar to Wisconsin to give themselves the best shot. But, they, but the bottom line is they still need a little help. Okay. The big thing to watch on Tuesday night is where Ohio State is ranked in comparison to USC. I think people are eliminating the Pac-12 from the playoff discussion a little too quickly. USC was ranked ahead of Ohio State last week. USC was 11, Ohio State was 13. I think a lot of people are assuming that Ohio State, by beating number 12, is just going to jump number 11 because USC did win. I think that's reasonable, but you have to wait and see if it happens. USC does not have a win left that would be as good as beating an undefeated Wisconsin team because they're going to face a two-loss team in the Pac-12 title game. They've already clinched the Pac-12 South. They'll either play Stanford, Washington, or Washington State. So Ohio State can burnish its resume better than USC can. But you have to get an indication, as Bill said, of how much the Iowa loss is hanging around your neck because USC has a loss to Notre Dame and then a close loss to Washington State. But but they don't have that 30-point loss like that. Although Notre Dame whacked them pretty good. Notre Dame beat them pretty good, but I think the point still stands. But Notre Dame's better than Iowa. Yeah. So don't rule out completely the Pac-12. But if, they, if that's settled, if it's pretty well established that Ohio State's going to be ahead of the Pac-12 champ, because USC is the best Pac-12 champ possibility, they have a really good path to get in. State was last year. What point do you want to make? I was going to say, it, it's a resume builder, I think, for Ohio State if they can sweep through the Big Ten East because if we all think the Big Ten East is the best division in college football, you know, that is a little resume booster as well. It doesn't cancel out losing by 31 Iowa. Nothing does, but that is a nice little check mark on that box. If you're, if you're a two-loss champ, two-loss champ versus two-loss non-champ, the two-loss champ's going to win. Two-loss champ versus one-loss non-champ, that's the issue. That's where Ohio State, as a one-loss non-champ, got in ahead of a two-loss champ last year. So that's what you have to worry about if you're Ohio State. But if you're only up against two-loss non-champs and you're a two-loss champ, now you're in the two-loss champ discussion. So it's Alabama, Miami, Oklahoma, and a two-loss champ, either from the Big Ten or the Pac-12 Watch to see where Ohio State is versus USC on Tuesday night, and you'll get a read on that. The path is there. It's not guaranteed, but you definitely can see it. That was long, but we're explaining things. It's a how-to. This is a TED Talk. I was like, if I like walked around the stage, 
It's like, and like, right? That's how they do in TED like, Talks. Like yeah. Like this. <laughs> so here's what would happen for Ohio State in the playoff. That's what that was. He's Bill. He's Tim. I'm Doug. See you later.